Here we'll go through an overview of the acquisition method here for business combinations. And for the example, Corp A will acquire or buy all of Corp B's net assets, that is its assets and liabilities. And to demonstrate the basic accounting for this business acquisition here, I have set up Corp B's balance sheet showing its assets, its liabilities, and its shareholders' equity. Now accounting for the acquisition method, that's based on the fair value of the assets and liabilities being acquired. Now we must identify all the assets and liabilities involved and determine their fair value at the acquisition date. Now looking at Corp B's balance sheet here, I have set up both the book value and the fair value of the assets and liabilities. Okay, to account for this acquisition, we're going to do a value analysis. Now we're going to purchase these net assets at their fair value here and we're going to exchange common stock for the net assets. So Corporation A here is going to issue common stock to Corporation B in exchange for the net assets of Corporation B. And our first scenario here will be the price paid here is greater than the fair value of the net assets received. So to determine our fair value of the net assets here, we've already determined that here by looking here at the $860,000 worth of our total assets here at the fair value and then subtracting here the difference or our fair value here of our total liabilities of $140,000 so we have $720,000 of fair value for our net assets here and because the price paid is greater than the fair value of the net assets received there's goodwill involved so to determine our goodwill here we determine the price that we paid that was the stock that we're issuing here for eight hundred thousand dollars and then subtracting the fair value of net assets that we're receiving from it for it for seven hundred and twenty thousand dollars we get goodwill here of eighty thousand dollars so here's our goodwill here and that's its fair value here on our balance sheet Okay, looking at the journal entries for this acquisition, and we're going to look at it from the perspective of, of the acquirer here of Corporation A. So looking at our asset side of the equation here, we had goodwill involved, so we debit or increase our goodwill for $80,000. And then our assets here, those are acquired at the fair value. We debit or increase those for $860,000, their fair value here. And I have to note here that the if there was any goodwill here of the acquirees or Corporation B, that would not be included in the acquisition. So that wouldn't be included in any of the assets here. And then moving over to the liabilities side of the equation here, we acquired the liabilities here of Corporation B here at $140,000 worth. So we credit or increase our liabilities for $140,000 worth. And then are the stockholders equity we issued stock here uh, for forty thousand dollars worth here of the par value so we credit our common stock here for forty thousand dollars here and then the additional paid in capital here for common stock was a seven hundred and sixty thousand dollars so we credit that and then there's one last thing here uh, any of the expenses involved in this acquisition could be uh, expensed off here for the acquirer so we had uh, in this case, we had uh, stock costs here for issuing the stock, so we debit or we de decrease our common stock par amount here for $10,000 for those stock issue costs. And then our other uh, acquisition costs would be expensed here. So we would credit or reduce our cash here for $25,000 and its expense that was involved. And then we debit or in increase our expenses here for the acquisition cost of $35,000. That would be the $10,000 here for the uh, stock uh, acquisition or issuance costs here plus the cash expense that we paid. All right, let's look at the scenario here where the price paid is less than the fair value of the net assets received. And in this case, there would be no uh, goodwill involved. We'd either have a gain or loss on this acquisition. So again, looking at our fair value of our net assets, uh, we had the $860,000 worth of assets here, less the $140,000 worth of liabilities. So our net assets, again, were $720,000 worth here. 
but the price we paid here in this case was only five hundred thousand dollars worth we only issued five hundred thousand dollars worth of stock to corporation b so we subtract the uh, fair value of the net assets here of seven hundred and twenty thousand dollars or we compare that to the price we paid here of five hundred thousand dollars worth and in this case we have a gain here of two hundred and twenty thousand dollars worth all right, looking at our journal entries from the perspective here of Corporation A or the Acquirer Corporation, our assets here would be acquired at their fair value of $860,000 and our liabilities here would be acquired here at their fair value of $140,000 and then our expenses for this acquisition would be the same here, $35,000. But what would have been changed here is the amount of stock that we issued here. For our common stock at par value here, we had $25,000. We'd credit that for $25,000. And then our additional paid in capital here for common stock would be increased or credited that for $475,000. So the total amount of common stock that we issued here was worth $500,000. And then we'd recognize a gain here on this acquisition. We'd credit our gain here for $220,000. And that would be part of our net income. Okay, now let's look at this acquisition from the perspective of the uh, corporation that's being bought out. In this case, it's Corporation B, the acquiree corporation that's being bought out by Corporation A. Now going down and looking at its balance sheet down here. It's not the fair value that we're concerned with, but it's the book value or the carrying value that Corporation B has for these assets and liabilities. And what we have to be concerned with and deal with here is any gain or loss on this transaction or this acquisition. So doing our value analysis here, uh, we, are, we use the book value of the net assets. We have to determine the book value here of the net assets to determine any gain or loss on this acquisition here. So looking at our book value here of $460,000 for our total assets, less the book value here for our total liabilities of $125,000, we have a net book value here of our net assets of $335,000. Now to determine any, any gain or loss, we take the price we received. In this case, we received $800,000 worth of stock from Corporation A. And then we'd uh, look at the difference here, subtract the book value of the net assets here of $335,000. And in this case, we have a gain here of $465,000. So we received $800,000 and we gave up here a book value amount here of $335,000. So there's our gain, $465,000. Okay, looking at our journal entries here for from the perspective of Corporation B here that's being bought out by Corporation A. Uh, for our asset account here, we'd have an investment account. And that's the investment here in Corporation A, and that's the fair value of the stock that we received here from Corporation A and we debit that for $800,000. Now typically this stock here would be distributed to the shareholders and this corporation here would cease to exist. That would be Corporation B. And then for the assets and the liability accounts and the stock accounts here that are carried on the book here for Corporation B at its book value, those would be closed out because the corporation would no longer exist. And then we'd also recognize a gain here on the sale of the business here to Corporation A. And we'd credit that in this case for $465,000, the gain that we recognized here on this uh, uh, buyout here, or the sale of the business. Now this gain here would also be distributed to the uh, stockholders or the owners of the corporation when uh, it ceases to exist. Okay, in summary, when doing our value analysis here from the perspective of the company doing a buying out the other company, we use the fair value of the assets and the liabilities here. And if the price paid is greater than the fair value of the net assets received, then we have to determine the amount of goodwill. And if the price paid is less than the fair value of the net assets received, then we have to determine any gain or loss on the acquisition.